get that. But uh, why don't I take one more question? Go ahead. Um, yeah, I had actually two unrepeated <coughs> questions. Okay, I'll um, see if I can. Your choice, whichever. All right. But um, the first is if you could describe a little bit what you learned when you were in Africa, what mm -hmm. you brought back. Mm -hmm. And the second question was um, if you could tell us what your civil rights law practice is like. Okay. Uh, as far as Africa, the, as I said, the entire book ends uh, in Africa. My, it, it was an interesting process for me because uh, my personal journey to discover very directly who my family was, I think, mirrors uh, uh, a more abstract sense of a lot of African Americans that they need to go back and reclaim their roots. Um, and a, a further parallel exists because in the same way that I think I had looked at my father as sort of an idealized image. Uh, so does the African American community, I think, tend to idealize Africa, look at it through rose-tinted glasses, um, if it thinks about it at all. Now, you know, part of that is counteracting uh, years of feeling ashamed about Africa. So. Uh, going back, I think, for me, uh, was to embrace at least a partial truth about Africa, which is that there's good in Africa and there's bad in Africa, uh, that uh, there, there's great joy and much to be learned from Africa, uh, but that there's also much uh, to, be, uh, to be discarded about certain African traditions. Uh, a very specific example is the sexism that exists in Africa, um, which I think debilitates the country. So, you know, I, I think that's more than anything what I brought back um, until you get to sort of a more mystical plane where, I mean, it is true that when you're on the Serengeti and you're looking out across the expanse, uh, uh, time feels different, and you bring back something, I think, that... Uh, is different and, and stays in you. Um, but I, I know, for example, I took my wife back. Uh, and as I said, she grew up in the south side of Chicago. And uh, what she realized was that she was an American. I think it, very profoundly she realizes. Now, she's you know, a very uh, beautiful, regal, African-looking, brown-skinned sister. You know, and she goes there, and we go up to my grandmother's village, and first of all, she's riding in matatus, these little jitneys that are bumping along the road, and there are chickens on her laps, and, you know, she's, you know, what was that game when, when we were kids, right? And you put your twist, right, that, that's how it feels. And uh, um, so we get up there, and, and my little cousins, they all start pointing at her and saying, look, the, the wazungu, which means the white lady. Now, you know... <laughs> For, for, for a girl from the south side of Chicago, uh, whose complexion is about like this young lady's right here, that's, uh, that's sort of a stunning uh, <laughs> sort of uh, uh, welcome. Uh, but, but beyond the superficial things, I think what, what you realize when you go back is, is that uh, uh, African Americans already partake of a hybrid culture. You know, we, we are part of a hybrid culture. And, and we can't deny that. Uh, so in some ways, you know, the, the more obvious uh, uh, biracial identity that I have to uh, affirm, African Americans also have to affirm. And white Americans have to affirm because they partake in a hybrid culture. I mean, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, is that American culture at this point, what is truly American is black culture to a large degree. Flip on the television set. Look at Pulp Fiction. You know, I mean, you can choose whatever examples you want. Um, and and uh, uh, it's had a profound influence on, on this entire nation, and it has to be uh, affirmed. Uh, in terms of my civil rights practice, it's hard. 